Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, Mm. you awake yet? Yes, darling, what is it? David, I've been thinking about Hartley and Julia's dinner party tonight. Holy smokes, is there dinner tonight? I've completely forgotten it. I have to be up in Connecticut today. It'll mean I'll be getting back late. Do you think they really approve of me? Oh, so-so. What do you care? You're married to me, not to them. Don't be silly. When you marry, you marry the whole family. Speaks the old married woman. Julia always looks as though she'd been licked by a cat. (laughs) David, would you like me if I were a little more soigné? That means smart and well-togged out. I know what it means, darling. Nothing doing. I... Like you just as you are. You wouldn't like it if sometimes I looked as if I'd been licked by a cat? You just try it and see what happens. <laughs> Any more conversation with me will have to be conducted in the shower. I'll be late getting up to Connecticut. David, you suppose they'll know? Know what? About the baby. 30 days has September, April, June, and... Uh, you mean the baby we're having next June? Yep. No, I don't think they'll know unless you tell them. Which, knowing you, is a positive certainty. David, do you know what? Yes, I know what. No, do you know what I forgot to tell you? Come to think of it, I don't think I do. What? Julia called yesterday morning. We have to dress for dinner. I don't know how I could have forgotten to tell you. I suppose the baby took up so much of your time you didn't get around to it. Mm. Babies are demanding, little devil. Just think of how much time it'll really take when it gets here. And think of how much time it's going to take before it gets here. What I'm thinking about this moment is the idea of getting dressed for dinner tonight. It gives me a swift pain in the neck. Why? He's having some important guests. Mr. Carrington from Chicago. Hartley mentioned him the other day. Will you tell me why people from Chicago, when they come to New York, want to dress for dinner? Or why people in New York feel they have to dress when they have people from Chicago dine with them? A vicious, barbaric circle. Do you know you're getting in the habit of talking in circles? I'm catching it from you. Huh. Julia says I should make a special effort to look nice and make an impression on him. Who? This Mr. Cowington that you're going to dress up to meet. Julia says it's important for you as an architect. I'll thank Julia to... Now, look, the only person you're supposed to make an impression upon is me. And the only thing that is important to me as an architect is to be a good architect. I don't like mixing business and dinner parties. How soon will breakfast be ready? Just as soon as I get the coffee started and the eggs in. And the orange squeezed and the bread sliced and the cat fed. I'll go along. Now, you run along or I'll splatter shaving soap in your Uh, eye. You know, when we had only one bathroom in the apartment downstairs, we got started earlier in the mornings. This second bath will come in handy when we have the baby, though. What are you doing today? Oh, nothing much. No more auctions? No. Nope. I'm going to wash my hair for tonight, do some shopping for the house with Mama, and take a long walk. Dr. Rowland said I should take a long walk every day with the baby. With the baby? Of course with him. I couldn't very well leave him behind, could I? Oh, and bake a custard. I don't like custard. Neither do I. Then why bake one? Get your practice on something we both like. Oh, it's not for us. It's for Bertha's sister. She sprained her knee. Bertha's been so good to us. Now, look, you cook custards for people who have temperatures or who can't take solid food. But you don't cook them for people with sprained knees. Why not? If she has a sprained knee, she can't cook a custard for herself? No. She couldn't marinate a herring, either. It's custard or nothing. Studied up on custards yesterday. (laughs) All right, darling, custard it is. It's the gesture that counts. You're a nice girl, and I love you very much. David, now listen. Do you want your coffee and not be late for starting out? 
Or do you not want your coffee and be late? You know, I almost see what you mean. Two eggs. Add a cup of milk. Teaspoonful of vanilla, three of sugar, pour in bowl. You see, dust with nutmeg and put in moderately hot oven. Oh, the idiots! Why didn't they start out with a moderately hot oven? I forgot all about turning on the stove. Matches, 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 matches. If David doesn't stop stealing my matches, oh, here they are, looking right at me. I never knew it to fail. All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hello, Mama, you're earlier than I expected. How do you feel this morning? Were you dizzy? No, isn't that funny? Is it all right not to feel dizzy? Perfectly all right. I was never dizzy with you until after you were born. I'll be ready to leave with you in a few minutes. Don't I smell gas? Naturally you do. I just lift the oven. Does it always smell like that? You ought to have Fritz check it. I'll look at no, it. No, 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 I will, Mama. <gasps> For goodness sakes, I forgot to light it after all. Well, don't now, Claudia. Be careful. What should I be careful for? I do this every day of my life. <laughs> oh, Claudia, are you hurt? I think I'm killed. Open your eyes. Can you see? Are your eyes all right? I think so. It's not something you have to think about, can you or can't you? My eyes sting, that's all. What happened? The oven exploded. You could have been burned to death, you little idiot. But, 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 but it never did that before. It was never full of gas before. I warned you not to light it. You don't think it hurt the baby, do you? <laughs> I'm sure it didn't. But I hope you get this sort of nonsense out of your system in the early months. I smell something burning. It isn't me, is it? No, you're not burning now. What are you looking at me so funny for? Uh, uh, <laughs> What's the matter? Why are you crying, Mama? I'm laughing. Laughing? You look so funny. Well, so would you look funny if you were as scared as I am. <laughs> Mama, what's that smell like a... Like a singed chicken. I, I think it's you. Claudia, can you stand a terrible shock? What is it? Oh, wait, I'm all full of soot and covered with custard. Oh, now I have to wash my hair this morning instead of this afternoon. I'm afraid you haven't got enough hair left to wash. What? Get out of my way. Let me look in that mirror. You better close your eyes when you look. You won't be able to stand it. Mama. <gasps> Mama, I'm ruined. So are your eyelashes. Mama, what am I going to do? I would suggest getting down on your knees and thanking the good Lord that you're alive and whole. But, but, but the party tonight and David seeing me like this, I'd almost rather be dead. You don't look any worse than the day you were born. After all, you didn't have any hair or eyebrows then. But David didn't want to marry me the day I was born. Well, don't be so tragic about it. This will be a good test of his love. And Julia's dinner party. Julia. Mama, that gives me an idea. Pierre and Antoine. Yes, Mrs. Van Merrill. Four o'clock. Yes, madame. Shampoo, set, manicure, and facial. Monsieur Rene will take care of the set, and Lucille will give you the facial. Goodbye, Mrs. Van Merrill. Mama. You realize I've never had a facial in my life. Well, I imagine that Mrs. Van Merrill has never had a custard pack and a complete singe in her life. Is there anything I can do for you, madame? Uh, yes, please. I want an appointment with Mr. Pierre. I'm afraid it will have to be Monsieur René. Mr. René, madame. Monsieur Pierre only takes care of special cases. But, but, but I'm a very special case. Uh, may I just see Mr. Pierre? It's very important. He's very busy. But uh, may I have your name? Norton. Mrs. David Norton. No relation to Mrs. Hartley Norton? Why, yes, I'm her sister-in-law. Oh, Mrs. Norton, well, that's different. If you wait a moment, I'll call Monsieur Pierre. Just 
the mention of Julia's name and I inherit the beauty shop. Now you see what I'm up against for tonight. Well, don't expect a miracle, although this place looks expensive enough for a miracle. Look, here he comes. Isn't he a funny-looking little man? Almost as funny as you are, with no hair. Ah, bonjour, bonjour. Good day, Madame Norton. For years I have taken care of your sister-in-law, Madame Hartley Norton. Such a charming, charming woman. I, I, I'm having dinner with my sister-in-law tonight. Do you think you could make me presentable? I would not say that you are not presentable, madame. You had better let her turn around into the light where you can see her before you make such a rash statement. There. La, 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 la. The stove blew up. La, la, la. Please stop saying la, 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 la. Is it too bad for you to do anything about... Say something. La, 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 la. Too bad? It is perfect. It could not be more perfect. C'est magnifique. C'est merveilleux. I, I don't understand. But you have everything in your favor, but everything. No eyebrows, no eyelashes, no hair in front. And that is good? Oh, madame misunderstands. It is that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Madame is like a blank canvas to a painter, like a lump of wet clay to a sculptor. This is making me feel better every minute. First, I'm a singed chicken, now a lump of wet clay. Madame still does not understand. Most women come to me saying, my eyebrows, my hairline, my eyelashes, make them all better. I would have to be their mother to make them better. Whereas with my daughter, you start at the beginning. Exactement. With her, we start from the beginning. Voila, madame, now the face. Relax completely while I apply the cream. The eyes tight closed. Do not wrinkle the brow. C'est magnifique. <laughs> you will not know yourself. I have been waiting for exactly two hours and ten minutes. I'm very sorry, madame. Oh, here's your daughter now. Where? Coming right toward you. Claudia, I'd never recognize you. What on earth are those whisk brooms on your eyes? My false eyelashes. And what's that frizz on your forehead? My false curls. Good heavens, what are those long red soda spoons on your hands? My false nails. Isn't there anything about you that's real at this point? Oh, Mama, this is terrible. Claudia, what on earth is the matter? I'm... I'm afraid I'm going to sneeze. Well, for heaven's sake, sneeze. At least that's natural. But I'll fall all in pieces. Ah, <laughs> madame, your daughter is divine. A dream, a vision of delight, n'est-ce pas? She may be a vision of delight to you, but I don't know what her husband is going to say to this get-up. Mr. Norton, he will adore it, I'm sure. You don't know Mr. Norton. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. If the lady with the sharp elbows edges into your place at the counter, don't let shopping annoy you. Just step over to that familiar red cooler and have a refreshing, frosty, delicious Coca-Cola. You'll go on your way refreshed. Come to think of it, why not go to the refrigerator and get yourself an ice-cold Coke this very minute? Treat yourself, lady, to the pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>